Hello again. Welcome to another video on free body diagrams. This is going to pick up where we left off with the previous video, where we were taking a look at this particular load test of a jib crane. Two-ton jib crane tested at 4,000 pounds hanging out here at the end of that concrete weight. So it's a test at 100% capacity. And as we talked about last video, we wanted to, to take a look and calculate what are the reactions that these two supports and can the structure then withstand that? That's the, that was the question that we were interested in. Now what if we also look at this test and we say, well, what about this particular block right here? The straps, are these straps adequate for their task at hand? We can begin to answer that question by drawing a free body diagram of that concrete block isolated from its surroundings and including the loads and reactions, relevant dimensions on the concrete block. So that's where we're gonna that's where we're gonna go with this quick video. So I went ahead and left up the jib crane here, the list of what must be included in our free body diagram, so that we can see how all of this connects together. So the isolated body in this case is just the concrete block. And if we pull out the tape measure again, go measure how big this concrete block is, we can label it with those appropriate dimensions. And when we do that, we'll find that this is a two foot tall block and it is four and a half feet wide. So that's the isolated body, and it has a couple of the relevant dimensions on it. What else now needs to be included on this free body diagram? What loads are acting on this body? In this case, it's just the weight of the concrete block itself. So I mentioned earlier, when we're looking at structures, we often neglect the self-weight of the structure. In this case, it would be silly to neglect the self-weight of the concrete block. The purpose of that block is the mass or the weight itself. So let's note that with a force vector acting down, 4,000 pounds. And where is that vector placed on the body? It's placed at the center of gravity, right? So we can go ahead and denote that center of gravity. And we may even want to dimension where is that center of gravity located just for clarity. So we know that this is then 2.25 feet from the left side and one foot up from the bottom or measured from the top. Now just to be clear, I do use a little underscore on my ones. That's not a perpendicular sign, that is the numeral one. So we now have our isolated body. We've got the loads acting on the body. We've got some relevant dimensions. We haven't talked about reactions yet for this free body diagram. If we come back and take a look at that image, what do we see holding the concrete block in place? We should see a couple of straps or cables. So if we think about what is the reaction that that support can create on this free body, what would it be? Well, we know that we can't push on a rope, so cables and straps always have to be in tension. And if a cable or a strap is in tension, the force it's causing on the body it's connected to is pulling back on the body. So in other words, that strap would be pulling the body in that direction. And then we've got another strap on the other side also pulling back on the body. Now those force vectors, we don't know the magnitude, nor do we know the exact direction. Or do we know the exact direction? Could we measure the orientation of those straps? And we know that the reaction force acts in the same direction as the cable is oriented, or the, the, the strap is oriented. So we could measure these angles and when we did that we would find that they are 70 degrees off of the horizontal. 70 degrees off the horizontal. Now do we know the magnitude? No we don't. So we'll say that this is the force in the strap. I'll just use a force 
subscript S on the right, and this is the force in the strap on the left. Now we may be tempted to assume that they are equal in magnitude. Based on symmetry, it looks like that's going to be the case. But for now, let's not make that assumption. When we work through equations of equilibrium, those equations will confirm that particular assumption. Is there anything missing from this free body diagram? Think through what it must include. We've got the isolated body. We've got the load or the weight, the self-weight of the, the body. We've got the reactions at the supports, those two cables. We don't have a coordinate system. So let's go ahead and add a coordinate system. Do we have all the relevant dimensions? At first glance, it looks like maybe we do. But where are each of those cables acting on the block? We know the angle, but we don't know exactly where they're acting. So we again take out our tape measure, and we measure that this is one foot, and this is one foot from the edge, is the hooks through which those cables are physically attached. So we've now got a free body diagram of our jib crane that we had worked on earlier, and now of the concrete block. We come back to the image one more time. Are there any other bodies of interest that we may want to draw a free body diagram of, just to confirm that everything is going to be okay when it comes to capacity? What about this little hook right there? That little hook may be of interest. If we can see that we've got the cables or the straps hanging down, pulling down on this hook, and then we've got two chains coming out of this little assembly right here. Some sort of pulley probably is in there, right? So we've got the straps and we've got the two chains. Let's just quickly draw a free body diagram of that hook. Again, we will isolate the body from its surroundings. And that's what the object itself looks like. Now, we've already discussed briefly what it's going to have acting on it, so let's go ahead and include those. If we talk about loads acting on this, those straps are the loads in this particular case pulling down on the hook. Now, why is it pulling down? on the hook when I said it was pulling up on the concrete block. Well, that all has to do with Newton and the equal and opposite forces. So if we have a cable being pulled on one end, it's going to be pulled in the opposite direction that I'm going to be pulling on the other end. And that's what we're seeing here. So what about the magnitude of these two forces? Is it different than the magnitude that we would calculate from this free body diagram? Absolutely not. It is the same force. And so we can actually use the same labels. The force in the strap on the left and the force in the strap on the right. And while we're at it, why don't we go ahead and label these direction or these uh, angles. They're both 70 degrees. And I should have mentioned this over here. The reason I'm putting that little tick mark there is if we remember back in geometry class, that denotes that those are two equal angles, right? Okay. What else is needing to be included on this free body diagram. We got the body, we got the loads, what about reactions? We've got these two cables, or these chains, I should say. We've got one here and one here. Again, we could assume that they're going to be equal in magnitude, but for now, let's just not. And so this will be the force in the chain on the left, this will be the force in the chain on the right. What else needs to be included now to make that a complete free body diagram? We need a coordinate axis system, and we need to label some other dimensions. So we would put our coordinate axis system here. We could label these Both two inches. 
And maybe we would be, maybe we would be interested to know this total distance six inches. And now we've got yet one more free, complete and accurate free body diagram. Now these three free body diagrams all come from the same structure. It's that jib crane again that was being loaded up to 100% capacity. One assembly, multiple bodies that we were interested in. And depending on what we were interested in calculating, for example, in this case, we wanted to know what these reactions would be. We could apply equations of equilibrium to see if we could solve for those. In this case, we were interested in what is the tension in these straps so we could calculate that tension from this free body diagram. And lastly, we were interested in what were the forces in these chains. And so we could draw an additional free body diagram that will help us calculate the tension in those chains. So free body diagrams, key tool in understanding and applying mechanics.